What's up? Hello. Um, what I'm working on today is icons, achievement icons. And um, I've done a little bit of research, looked at some other games, icons, and I've settled on something that I think is important to me as an artist in creating um, good achievement icons. Um, so this is kind of my own priority system here. But um, what I feel is important is that the icons make an emotional connection to the player. And um, that can be through a sense of meaning, right? Or, um, or through something that the player has, a place the player has been, or something the player has experienced, something that evokes an emotion in the player, something that creates a connection in the player's mind. Um, and this is kind of the challenge of it, uh, in my personal opinion. And um, this is an example of something that doesn't emotionally connect, connect at least with me. Um, none of this means anything to me. These are some achievement icons. Um, uh, but check this out. That was, that's from Rain World. Um, and then even, even Hyperlight Drifter. I, I really look up to the guys that make this game and their art and everything, but this, it doesn't make any emotional connection at all to me, any of these icons. They're too meta. You know what I mean? They're, they're just like an icon that doesn't mean anything to me because it's, well, you know, okay, cool, that's maybe a bomb or something, but I don't know. So, but anyways, here's something that, this is really refreshing. Check this out, Axiom Verge. This makes a huge emotional impact on me because I fought this guy. This guy was tough for me the first time. I struggled to beat this guy, and here's a picture of him. I can emotionally connect. It has a sense of meaning for me as a player, looking at this instantly. I can be like, whoa, and it even looks cool. And then you get down to a few more of these and they just don't mean anything, like this question mark and some of these 100s and stuff like that. But awesome job there. And then that's Axiom Verge. And then check this out, Ori in the Blind Forest. Of course, you're going to expect some of the best art in the world. And they do. They have great art and it emotionally connects with you as a player. Oh, I remember that story sequence or this place in the world. All these seem to have some sense of meaning. The one... Um, one thing I think that could be better about these is if they just had a little more color because you can't really distinguish very easily that these are these have a sort of bluish tint to them and then the unlocked ones I mean the locked ones are all grayscale I mean I guess you can kind of tell the difference if I have them both right there but it would be nice if these were just all full of color okay. oh. taking a nap earlier. I forgot to turn my alarm back off. So that's today's challenge. Create some um, achievement icons that make an emotional connection to the player with Poor Songbringer. And um, what I'm starting with so far is places in the world. So these, these achievements I'm working on first are like Dungeon 1, Dungeon 2, Dungeon 3. So I'm just going with um, art that is a picture from Songbringer's actual gameplay. So that so so as a player you could be like, oh yeah, I remember that place. And at least at least you can make an emo emotional connection that way. So um, I've got these set up so they're pixel art. Um, Steam resolution is 64 by 64. I think um, PlayStation icons are also pretty small. But the one um, outlier is Xbox. Xbox's achievement icons are wide and they're huge. They're like 1920 by 1080. So I'm just doing these at a, as a at a ratio that's going to work for widescreen or widescreen 16 by 9 or square. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to go as fast as I can and get as many of these done in one stream as I can. I think I can get all 32 achievements done um, if I get them done in about three to five minutes each. So let's see what happens. I've got one done already, the template, so it shouldn't be too hard to proceed now. I'm going to close my font because I don't want to use it. I was experimenting with using, you know, numbers and letters, and it just didn't look that good. Okay, there we go. Dungeon 1, I already checked that in. Let's say this says Dungeon 2, 2 through 9.
Hmm. All right. Now, it would be cool to see Dungeon 7 first. Well, no, I'm going to have to do it in order to make this make sense to me. All right. Um, one thing I want to do before I do this is um, turn on all boss portals. So I'm just going to make turn off the requirement that you have to have been there. Oh, and his level. Okay, hold on. Zilton, what's up, man? How you been? Nothing's up. What's up, June Dury? College is ending already? Oh, just for the year. Right on, man. Okay, well, that's getting compiled. Um, I want to do screen res really tiny. So we're going to go into like Game Boy mode today. Game Boy mode! Nice, man. I'm glad it's inspiring. You don't want it to end? Heck yeah. I love that feeling. Oh, man. I'm glad you're having a good time. Oh. Okay, we're going to do 420p. Uh, window ratio 16 by 9. And I've got HUD, I got this new special HUD mode which turns off heroes. What's up, Magno? Oh, it's not because you're having a good time? Why is that? Okay, why do you want to be still at still at college? Okay, so let's make sure this is all set up. So we're gonna run the game in 420p. Tiny window. What? That didn't work. Oh. There we go. Oh, you don't know? Well, this isn't quite the tiny window. It's supposed to be 240, actually. Too soon. Oh no, what happened? What? What the heck happened? Oh, it loaded the website make and make run. Cause I was I was doing a debug command. Oh, that's so weird. Twitch, chat, sorry guys. I lost your chat messages, probably. Okay, so yeah, repeat anything you want me to reply to. 240p, 16 by 9. Let's see if it's all the way down to 240p this time. And if I think if I press the P key, it'll take a screenshot. Or do I already have it running? No, okay, it's not running. Press P? No, that doesn't work. If I hold P? I had this old, old, like, Shortcut where I just held the P. Yeah, I don't do that anymore. Okay, we just need to do always screen cap. Yes, yeah, the only way to play it, um, to get to play the beta version currently is to do, get the $32 version. Um, if you buy the $16 version, you're basically just buying, you're pre-ordering the game for when it's, when it comes out later this summer. Yay, I'm live, we're here, we're here together. We're chatting, we're talking, we're saying stuff. 
Okay, one more little tweak to the HUD system because I forgot that here, set HUD type. If HUD type is less than minimal and we're at always green cap, then set it up to minimal. So basically that allows this these new HUD modes. There's two new HUD modes, HUD zero, which turns the HUD completely off and HUD invisible, which turns all the heroes invisible. I'm using the heroes invisible right now to take these achievement icon screenshots. And if that's all good, then I want to go to Dungeon 2. And that, I'm going to do these kind of out of order. But, oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Yes, good. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. I just wanted to see a screenshot of Dungeon 2's entrance. Any world really will do. And that just said, yes, good. Got a whole bunch of screenshots here to choose from. Doesn't really matter that much. Let's do that one. Oh yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Well, keep in mind it is the beta version. There's still gonna be some tweaks and last minute like bug fixes and things like that are still coming. It's gonna be a few more months till the game's all completely done. So at this point, you know, you're either going to want to hold out until the game is totally finished or you're going to want to play the beta version right now and that's that's totally your prerogative. Okay, now to get this down to... About there, 117 or so. We're looking at about... Wick 27, height 28, it's not exact. There we go, so we're using nearest neighbor, so that's cool. Now, this is something the player can emotionally connect with. Yay, here's something, a place that I've been or a place I wanna go, I can make an emotional connection. It means something to me. Yeah, it's a game you wanna play on console? Well, you, we will have consoles um, pre-orders available soon. So um, I'm not sure exactly when, but I'll definitely let everybody know when when it's available to be pre-ordered on console. And the consoles that we have right now are Xbox One and PlayStation 4, and more consoles may come in the future. We will see. I know there's a certain few consoles people have been asking for like crazy, and we'll just have to see, because it's a shitload of work to just to get it onto a single console. So, give us a break, man. Give us a break. <laughs> All right, here we go. We got this one. Now, oh, good, I'm using a lot of, of vibrancy here. That really helps it look more colorful. Nice, PS4, right on, good. Yeah, I know, it's, it's kind of a console game. It's really meant to be played with at least a controller. Let's center that a little bit. There, that looks nice. Oh, but now it's... Right, right. That's the one that people are asking for. Okay, let's get this so it can... Let's go like that. So we can kind of fake some more pixels on the side. That looks good. There. And then, like, merge these. Put on this vibrancy. There we go. Okay, we got one of these done. I think I did this one pretty slowly. It definitely took more than three minutes. But let's get this all saved out. So. I got this actions all set up so I can do save icon 1920 and that just output outputs um, to this folder and I can just rename it. So achievement dungeon 2. Yeah, so that's the widescreen big version. Let's save the square version. Let's 
really is a time saver having these shortcuts. So that's two. Oh, I did it. I did it wrong. I need to do these gray ones first, actually. A list of games with contextual perspective. Oh, you mean what's the perspective? Um, this is an orthograph orthographic perspective, somewhat isometric. Is that what you mean? Yeah, there we go. There's two minus minus. And then let's get the two 1920. What the hell? Oh, well, it's W minus minus. Yeah, W minus minus W, two minus minus, and now just two. So the next time I do this, I need to do the gray first. Say back on square. Oh, what's the message? What do you, okay, you get, what do you mean by message? There's so many messages. There's there's the um, the message the story is trying to send. There's the message the entire game is trying to send in its most meta way you'd consider that. What you mean by message? Help me narrow it down a little bit here. Two two minus one. Good. Okay, two's done. Yay. Let's get three. How to survive alone in an unknown place? That sounds like, um, what's that survival game? Oh, Don't Starve? That's, that sounds like a really good way to describe Don't Starve. Okay, Dungeon 3. Oh, what a takeaway from the game. Oh, easy, man. Yeah, the whole point of Songbringer is to use your heart. Well, not just use it, no, that's, that's, that's not the message. The message is follow your heart, ignore your brain. I've woven that into so much of Songbringer, it's not even funny. I just keep loading in the wrong, in the background. Doesn't matter, all right, okay, done with that. Get, let's find the right screenshot. That's a cool one. Let's take that. Nice, this one aligned pretty well. Any other messages? No, there's no other message. If there were two messages, it would it would obscure the first message. Okay, grayscale grayscale first. All right, now we can go the big one. Yep, that's the W minus minus. Yeah, man, maybe that's the point your teacher's trying to tell you. Save icon square. This one is three minus minus. Turn on the color.
All right, another icon done. Nice. Whoa, it's crazy that the fire goes away. Okay. That one's done. Dungeon four. These dungeon ones are easy. Once you have the, the, the whole process ready to go and your concept all, you know, conceptual. So far I haven't had to change the order yet. Why does it keep loading in the background? This could be four, this is a good one for four, yeah. Okay, I'm liking all these. What software? I use Photoshop. That's what I'm doing right here, Photoshop. Okay, we got the doors shut. I like the light beams really bright. That's good, right about there. Actually, I think the last screenshot also had the flame in that exact position. Too bad, I had this one bit of code working where it offset the animations for all the flames, but then it stopped working at one point. I haven't had time to go back in and fix it. So it would have been nice for these little screenshots right here to have the flames as different screen, as different frames. The flames, different frames. This one's ready to roll. Do a gray first. Whoops. Actually left the crop on. This is getting easier. I love it when things get easier. Dungeon 5, this world pineal just like is kind of ideal as far as how what the dungeon order has been so far. Pineal is ideal. This one's 5, I think this one should be, oh no this is the dungeon, this is fear? No, this is acid. Acid 6, hmm. I'm thinking fire should be 6. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna have to do this one out of order. This one should be eight or five, six, seven, eight. This one should be seven. This is a good one for seven. Yeah, I use Photoshop for creating sprites, for editing my art, for everything. Um, the reason I do that, the reason I use the same piece of software for all my art is that it's just easy on my brain to get really familiar with one piece of software and use that for, you know, for my art. Um, it's typical that, you know, if you're creating other kinds of art, maybe you're going to use a different piece of software, but you're probably going to use that different piece of software all the time. Because if like you're making vector art, you're probably going to be using, you know, your vector art software all the time for creating all of it, everything you're doing. But if you're doing painting, you're going to be using some, some kind of painting software and stuff. I've heard there's a really great Alternative to Photoshop? Man, what's that new thing? Live Studios! What's up, man? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. How are you? There's like some sweet, awesome, new 
um, art software out there. It's really relatively inexpensive and like up there with Photoshop, how awesome it is. Krita, yeah, Raybro. Is that it? Krita? Yeah. No, not, not Ace Bright. Ace Bright's good too, but like. Oh, no, wait, it's not actually Krita. That's not the one I was thinking of. But yeah, I've, I've seen this one too. I heard it's great. But there's another really, really awesome one. The guy from um, the guy that makes Megas Megasphere, Anton Kudin, he uses it. Um, what's his? Is it? Is it actually just Anton Kudin? I forgot what his Twitter is. Yeah, this is it. Maybe he has some. I don't know. It was quite a while ago that I saw him mention it. He's been doing some interesting stuff this entire project. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, isn't he great? Yeah, great artist. Incredible artist. And I love all the technical things he does too. All these little like effects are all unique and procedurally generated and stuff. So rad. I know, right? Yeah. It's, I find his, his dreams to be so soothing to watch. I'm like, ah, I love just watching him make art. So good. Okay, so I got some screenshots for five. Sorry, I actually got a little distracted there. But this one is gonna be dungeon seven in the achievements. There's no before boss portal. Oh, no before boss portal, why is that? Check this code. Has its entrance before boss pause is valid? Oh, this is for. Does this even work? Yeah, let's just turn this off completely. Oh, we're already checking for consensus level right here. There's really no need to check for that twice. Okay, let's redo that. Man. It's gonna bug me what the name of that art software is now. Still no boss portal? Well, screw it. Screw it. We don't need one. I'm not gonna to worry too much about it. Oh, yeah? Okay, dungeon seven. Wait, should I make this one five actually? Because. Oh, yeah, I think I should make this five. If I want to make the swordless dungeon seven, it'd be nice to have a little break between the two sandy dungeons. Oh, I'm working on achievement icons today. Yeah, let's do Dungeon 5. Dungeon 
so that there's going to be a little break. Nice. You were working on yours yesterday? Uh, there's going to be 32 in the first uh, release. There'll probably be some added after that. What game were you making, man? Have we talked about it already? Apologies if I, I'm just a doofus. Achievement five. W whoops. W minus minus. Here is minus minus. Here's W, and there's five. So we got five. Yep, looks good. Lots of color. Liking these. How about yourself, Lime Studios? How many how many achievement icons did you do? Oh, cool, man. It's a mix of a roguelike and some sim. Cool. Okay, so I want six to be the fire dungeon. Let's hope this is just right. If someone turns off the in-game music in the settings and beats a level. <laughs> you know it's a rhythm game, right? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, right, right. I got you on the, the, the secret part. Okay, so that one is actually Dungeon 7. I like that. So, if for anybody watching the stream and you don't know, um, Lime Studios is working on a cool rhythm game called Arith uh, Arrhythmia, right? Which is also funny. Funny thing to name a rhythm game. Did I just, did I get your name right? I forgot. It's been a minute since I played it. Yeah, Arrhythmia. 20 planned. Cool, man. I like that. That's a really funny hidden achievement. Wait a minute. I didn't accidentally do the crop thing again, did I? Is that last one? Oh, good. All right, we're gray. Save it. The cards? I'm not sure. I got to do those the cards too, right? Are the cards? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm actually kind of debating whether I should do cards or not. I definitely think, you know, at first I thought, yeah, I definitely need to do cards. Everybody's doing cards. But now I'm kind of wondering because there's certain games that I play where you get the card 
as and it gives you that notification in Steam. Oh, you got a card, and then I'm, and I'm like excited, like yay! What what's it? What's my notification in Steam? What's that? I click on it, and it's like oh, it's just a stupid card. Right? Yeah. People say you should, but I'm kind of debating that right now. I'm 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 questioning whether it's it's actually something that benefits players or whether it's just doesn't benefit players or it isn't something interesting to players. I guess maybe because I just don't use them. Maybe I need to use them a little bit. But I don't know what I would use those for. Oh yeah? Then you realize you pull the foil card and find it's worth 16. Oh yeah. Right? So why wouldn't I just give people tons of great cards then? It's just team making money with that. You're not into cards either. Zilton, Zilton, tell me more about why cards are cool. Do you, what do you, do you, tr you trade them, right? You trade them and you can kind of like sell them and stuff, right? Seven W. Seven. All right, ripping along. We got almost 10 dungeons done. Oh, oh, you can like the cards for just the art. That's cool, right? Oh, oh, that's kind of, I didn't know that. So indie games, the cards go for more. Oh, okay, so people will buy your game just to get the cards. Wow. I wonder what the percentage of players is that does that, you know, and, and I guess, I don't know, I don't know. It's probably, it's probably a bad idea to not do cards, it seems like. Okay, so we had to do that one out of order. Let's see what Dungeon 7 is. Hopefully, I hope it is. <clears throat> All right, yeah, this is a good fear dungeon. This one's fear. Okay, so this one's gonna be eight. Hmm, that's, a, that's an interesting way to, to look at it too. So like, I've played a few games lately where I don't, I haven't got any cards yet. And I f kind of found that refreshing. I, for, for, for me, I personally, I would rather earn an achievement than I would then get a card. So that's the kind of thing. It's like they both kind of appear the same almost to me at, on Steam because you get a card sometimes or sometimes you get an achievement, but you get those. Wait, do you get notifications for both of them? I don't know. They almost kind of feel you, this like the same thing to me. This one's gonna be eight. I love this dungeon because it's so dark. I love the darkness of this one. Oops, I did that again with the crop. 
Okay, keep the crop off, man. Keep the crop off. This is W minus minus. Man, this is a real huge time saver to set up these two little actions that just save it in the right format because otherwise I, you have to type in the numbers every time. It's just way slower. Way slower. Typing? Jeez. Something I've really been on lately is the anything I can automate at all to save myself time. I've been taking the, short, the time to implement those shortcuts and I've found it to be very rewarding. Oops, I did, wait, this one's, okay, right, A, W. Right, right, yeah, that's what, we were just talking about that earlier on the stream, um, maybe, it, it's like, it's not my decision to make, and um, I won't go into the politics of it all, but I will just tell you that there's politics getting your game on Switch. So, it looks like Songbringer maybe might be on Switch at some point, but um, I can't tell you for sure. I'm, I'm hoping, and I know Double Eleven, my publisher, is hoping that it ha that happens too. Um, so we'll see. All right, cool, we got eight, st eight icons done. Right? Oh, so you're trying to get your game on Switch too? All right, now we do Dungeon 8. This one's going to be Dungeon, actually, Achievement 7. All right, 7. Oh, whoops. I did 7. Okay. Oh, right, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, is this the fire dungeon? Is it? No, this is the this is the fear dungeon. Oh, yeah, it's the fear dungeon. So the other one was the fire dungeon, right? Yeah, it's definitely a cool console, isn't it? Okay, I got a little confused there. I think I did fire already and I thought it was fear. They look really, really the same almost. Oh, what the heck is that? Oh, so that's just six up PSD. Oh, gifts for achievements? No. Is that what you mean? For achievements? Five. Oh, I did five. Five was the sand dungeon. Four was ice. Three should have been yeah, the floaty dungeon. Seven is that. What's eight? Eight. Oh, yeah, yeah. So eight was supposed to be six. I know it would be cool. You could do it for your some of your icons on Steam. Like I know on Greenlight you could do it. I'm not sure if you can for your actual Steam icons though. Yeah, that's all supposed to be six. Oh, 
and so this one's going to have to change to 6. Uh, and then this one can become 8. Dungeon 8, done. Cool man, I'm glad you put your I, I'm glad you put this up on uh, the um, Green Lights concept. Cool man. I like your art. Is it eternal? Is that how you say it? Nice, man. I know, they just started retiring that, huh? I mean, they started it like a few months ago, but yeah. Yeah, definitely. How's it changing? They're getting rid of it. So they're going to have a new system where you have to buy into Steam, basically. You have to buy your way into getting your game on Steam. And they haven't announced, have they announced yet how much it's going to be? Like when they first announced this whole process, they're like, yeah, it's going to be somewhere between like $500 and $5,000. Something, something large to keep out people that are just not that sincere you know about their games yeah but I I liked I like the fact that you could gain some exposure for your game through doing green light so um, that I kind of missed that there's been tons of debates on this already yeah green light yeah green light was like a hundred dollars now it's gonna be more but basically it's basically just trying to keep out people that are just throwing just you know shit on just you know, stupid stuff on Steam. Now, I'm not saying that people's games are stupid or they're shit. It's just that some people try and like, you know, work the system and throw up some, I don't know, some weird product. Yeah, I do too. I really wish they improved it rather than totally killed this whole process. I definitely think it had some merit.
Oh, that's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a bunch of other, like, good ones for indies, aren't there? Like, just GOG. Just getting your game on GOG is different, so... I'm not sure if it's easier or what, actually. I still gotta do that. I gotta get my game on GOG. Might be hard, I don't know. Did they finally create some like actual announcement about it? Oh, they did. They did. Was it today? Oh, no, it was June sixth. But is it closing to today, or is it, it's like what the hell is today? The tenth. Oh, so in three days they're closing Greenlight. Wow. I gotta read this. It's pretty important news. It's critical. It's fundamental. Okay. What? It's only going to be $100? Doesn't that defeat the whole purpose of changing everything like this? Huh. I guess that kind of makes a sense because... Okay, no, I guess I, I, it is different than before because before you paid $100 once. So that's just super easy if you want to pay $100 and then release 10, 10 products you would call that are, you're just trying to get people's money for nothing or something, I don't know, whatever you call those products that people aren't desiring. But $100, so now you're paying having to pay $100 for each one. So then I guess that does make it kind of make sense. Yeah, I, I agree. I kind of think it should be more than just 100 Right, because some people are still going to pay $100 just to throw up their whatever it is. Their... I'm not trying to be judgmental or anything. I'm just saying, you know, a person that's, put, that's trying to put a product up that they haven't really put much time and energy into. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. They're just looking for a quick buck, I guess. No, man, that's a, no. You're 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 an example of not spam. You are definitely an example of not spam. Your game is a is a work of art. It's your creation. You've been working on it a while, right? I can tell you've been working on that a while to have dialogue and all your all your systems set up like that. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's okay to say they're just shit. Okay, thank you. Yeah, man, don't don't get yourself like any kind of like what is that called? It's an imposter syndrome. Sometimes you have an imposter syndrome. It just you should look that up. But imposter syndrome will stop you from doing things and being great at what you do. You already have some greatness, man. Let it shine. Let it shine, man. Let people see your things. Be proud of what you create. Did I miss one? I did. I missed the O, oh, the W. Oh, 
All right, cool. We got nine dungeons worth of achievements so far. Let's upload some of these. Right. All right, uploading these icons. Yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't mention that and I would just get away with it. But I don't, uh, I don't think I'm actually showing anything that's really... Uh, I guess I probably shouldn't do this. Oh well. I'll do that later. Okay, well, okay, let's just create more icons then. We'll get all these icons finished. <laughs> it's alright, it's alright. I was hoping... I knew that disclaimer was there, I've never showed it before. I hope not. I hope not. Uh, okay, well, what are we gonna do next? Um, dang, now I gotta look at a, well, let's see. I just get a different list of achievements. Um, and, oh, I guess we can get rid of all these. This code didn't work anyway. I don't know what was going on there, but for a minute that was like, wasn't doing anything. All right. Get that compiled, and we'll bring up the list of achievements here in constants, where they're constantly defined. Achievements types. The sword, that's a really easy one. I know, right now, I'm like, man, should I not upload this video? Oh. Sword, that's such an easy one. Okay, for this, I want to show the hero. Turn off the sword. Turn off shield. Jibda shouldn't have a shield either. <laughs> ah. Negative one. Let's look at always screen cap. Oh, we need jib. Maybe we shouldn't have jib actually. This is just supposed to be showing the sword. Yeah, let's turn this turn jib off for this. Oh, I gotta turn the heroes back on. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna let this whole sequence run. So I can pick pick the right screenshot, pick the right frame. Looks really good. Probably there at the end was good.
Yeah, right about there. Okay, I might as well go and save all the files I'm going to need anyways in one batch. So this one's going to be Achievement Sword. Oh, and I might as well just delete the background too from all those. Achievement Sword. Nice. Yeah, I built a tool that just records. Um, yeah, it just it just it just outputs a ping file as fast as it can, as many frames as it can. So like thirty, or you can set it. You can set a rate for it too. Like I want mine to be at ten frames a second or thirty. Oops. Okay, we got sword. What are all the achievements again? Shop. Psychedelic. Secret one, two. Glad hand craft. <laughs> add it. You want me to add it to the whole? I think it's already in there. You just turn on. Wait. It might not be. I'm not sure if it's enabled for release builds, but it's really simple to enable. If it is, if I will turn it on at some point, it'll just be this setting. So you can do a screen cap. You just have to manually add this to your saves settings. Glad hand. Did I do glad? I did. I do glad hand. Glad hand, did I do craft? No. Oof. Craft. Sign me kill, omni kill. You already, you already have one, nice man. Clear, clear to. Survive, permadeath, speed run. percent hundred percent hundred map these are gonna be interesting ones to try and create an emotional connection to the player any percent I guess that one will just be finishing something from the end of the game um, hundred percent hundred map No shop, swordless, double eleven.
explorer and wizard. All right, we got all those. Now I can just go and look at, sort these by kind maybe. That's gonna be weird actually, not by kind, name. All right, sword, let's do sword. Well, did I check? Oh man, I already had this one selected. Yeah, that's good right there. Five ninety nine. No jib, no jib in this screenshot. It's supposed to be focused on just the sword. Actually, do this. Dang. Thank you. Um, I want to do a fade on the edges. I want to try a fade on the edges and see how that looks. Wait. I want to do it differently. I want to do. I want to do a levels where it really darkens everything and then do two gradients on the sides. Oh yeah, you did. You found out about a game kind of in the similar genre just recently. Did the exact opposite. It's supposed to be image invert. Dang, yeah, see I want I want this on every one of the things I just saved. Damn. Pack South. Oh yeah, it is kind of simple. Same kind of, oh look at their eye, that's cool. <laughs> I like their title. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that's bad for SEO, but 
That's cool. Well, I guess I'll have to copy all these. Uh, you're not screwed. People need people need multiple cop, multiple games in some genres. Is players players of that game are probably going to be your best customer, and players of your game are going to be their best customer. You know what I mean? You guys you guys can complement each other. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, people have. Uh, <laughs> Okay, another one done. I'm gonna keep this one open so I can copy this layer here if I need. I know, right? It gets compared to Binding of Isaac, Zelda, Hyperlight Drifter. Um, yeah, anything in that Zelda -y indie pixel art genre is gonna be easily compared. Titan Souls, you know. Right, I know. At the beginning, it totally was to me just... The beginning of this whole project, to me, I just wanted to create a game kind of like the first Zelda, but with but procedurally generated. And then, yeah, like three years later, now it's something totally... It's kind of its own unique thing. But it's still largely just based on kind of the Zelda game mechanics, so it's you say it's in that genre. But you know what I found recently? I found that Zelda was not the first game of its kind. Um, Zelda, in fact, was inspired by another game called the Tower of Sam. What's it called? The Tower of It's the Legend of Zelda and the Tower of Gamora or the Gum Gum something. And Hydlide. Hydlide is a pretty the first hide line. No, this is not the first hide line. Hide line is a huge inspiration on on Zelda. There's a couple others that like came before Zelda. Yeah, it's not super hide line. The one all the way in the 80s. Here it is. Yeah, this game came before Zelda, but it's really large. It's this is. I would say that Zelda was inspired by this game. Um, I don't know whether they were, they actually were or not. I'm just trying to say that this has a lot of the same kind of play and mechanics and art style even. And then the Tower of, um, uh, Tower of, oh. early action RPGs.
Oh, here it is. This is the this is the definitive here. Oh yeah, Panorama Toe. That's another one. Dragon Slayer. Where the hell is the tower game, man? Oh, there, Tower Druaga. That's it. This was one of the very first action RPGs ever. It was an arcade game, actually. Yep. I know, yeah, you can have so much variety, exactly. And it, the same thing applies to your game and that game. They're probably... In, when, you, when you look, when you feel it a bit in... Oh, wow, this is a new Tower of Juaga. No, I'm talking about the old... Old Tower of Juaga. Yeah, here we go. Look at this, man. One of the very first action RPGs ever. In fact, this might have been the first. It's a lot like Gauntlet, almost. But the Tower of Juaga, the Legend of Zelda... There's a huge influence just in the name. Okay, on to the next one. Which one should we do now? Craft, that's easy. Go to the crafting, crafter, craft place. Turn on HUD mode 4, so we hide the heroes, got the sword, so we don't really need Jib at all. Now let's go to 1, 2, negative 2, craft something. There we go. That should be enough to get one good frame. Right, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The play can feel so much different. So much different. So whenever someone, you know, it's... it's I kind of did all that research about Zelda because it's like... People will give you shit just because your game is like another game and I don't know I've never really understood that it's almost like people are jealous of game creators or something like that I don't know but it's just a silly it's like some kind of silly nitpicky criticism that that a game is in the same genre as another and they'll the criticism is oh it's just a blah clone it's just a something clone it's just a clone of that game people it's like it's such a it's such a derisive criticism as a game creator for someone to say that. Be like, oh, your game's just a clone of that game. But it happens, man. It happens so much. People are going to forever call my game a clone of Zelda. They're going to forever call it a clone of Hyper Light Drifter and any other game that they've, that they've played recently, you know. Give it, give it three or four years, though. And they'll forget about calling it clones of this or that. It's funny. It did really. Well, there's a there's the thing. Like I don't know. Is was that game actually a clone though? <laughs> you prefer when they say, "Oh, it's like blah blah blah." <laughs> uh, Cool. This one's got like a lot of darkness on the side, so I don't really need to add much in the way of the adding darkness. Oh, I'll throw this under the vibrant. Yeah, there we go. It's really nice to add this vibrancy here. Oh, adventure on Atari. I never, I never seen that one. Oh, it was similar to Overwatch. Oh, so, but it played different. Okay, so it wasn't actually a clone. Cool. 
graph w minus minus Yeah. All right, we got minus plus. Looks good. What next? Pick one. Clear, clear two. Let's do some easier ones first. Um, explorer. Yeah, I guess Explorer could be the entrance above ground to dungeon one. Let's do that. Lenna's Inception, yeah. But I love Lenna's Inception. I bought that game, I love it. I love the developer, Tom Coxon. A lot, a lot of my first algorithms for making um, the dungeons for Songbringer were based on his um, articles. So I, I didn't, I didn't base it on any of his code, but I read his articles, got the whole gist of how he does his procedurally generated Zelda, and yeah, I kind of wrote it in my own way, um, in my own language, C plus plus. His is in Java and stuff too, but yeah, dude, Tom Coxon, cool guy, great game. Oh, Dark Souls lovers, right? I know, right? It doesn't. That's it. Doesn't. That's why it doesn't make sense to me either. Why would any game, a lover of games, ever bash a game <laughs> just because it's in a genre that they like, right? Or maybe they don't like. Maybe they just hate that genre. I don't know. Voice of Grog, what's up, man? Yeah, Meta Zelda, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go to dungeon entrance one, which is, I think it's actually five, four, one. Oh my gosh, if this is correct. No, it's not five, four, one. That's the entrance. Um, where is it? Entrance. Oh, it doesn't say. Okay, we just gotta go to five, go to dungeon one and go ride the elevator. No, that's it's starting um, next week. Yeah, E three, E three starts on Tuesday, ends on Thursday, and uh, I'll be flying out for it on this Sunday. So it basically starts for me tomorrow. I'll need to pack and get the game, re the demo ready, and all the other kind of stuff. Okay, I think that'll do for a screenshot for this one. Voice of Grog, how you been, man? Okay, I changed my mind. I want to do this one again because I want it to be a different hour of the day at least. I want to see some more shadows. Let's try time zero. You been busy? I know, right? Yeah, the Songbringer is just about finished now. Oh, it keeps doing this. Because I don't have the droid smith. Save. There. Now we got some shadows on the screen. That helps. Let's also try it maybe at night, though. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Let's try it at night. I think 3.50 should give us a good nighttime hour. And maybe we'll pick the best one from here first. This is not really, you can't really find a best one really. I guess that one's kind of cool. <laughs> nice man.
Last of Us 2. Mario Odyssey. Release date leaked. <laughs> oh, right. Last of Us 2. I think we've been hearing about this one. Sweet. Check it out. She's a guitarist. What do you wouldn't give? Do you want to do it for real? You can make that happen. Oh man, that's just really good. A little less on the hour though and it would just look super duper awesome. Maybe 320. You are? Sweet, man. That's cool. So you're almost out of college and you almost have your game all finished and stuff too. A game on Steam. Dude, it's a huge, huge selling point for any game studio to hire you. You have your own game on Steam, regardless of how well it does, dude. You, you went through the entire process of making a game, putting it on Steam, and all this stuff you have to do to make that happen. That's a lot. That's a lot of, hell yes, hire me. There, I like that shadow angle. Some rain is okay. I like the, the crows on there too. Let me get the, there, right there at the height of the glow. Yeah, this is much better than that one. Okay, we call this one Explorer. You hope they agree? I'm pretty sure they will, man. I've done interviews before, a couple times in my life, and they, people have always been impressed by what I've actually done rather than just the, the degree I didn't have. <laughs> I never had a degree, so I guess I had to always kind of sell my, sell it on what I've done in my life. Thank God I haven't had to do a job interview in so many years, man. When was the last one? 2002? 2003? I applied and I got a job at... Oh no, no, I worked as a busser after that. I definitely applied for tons of busser jobs. I bus tables, man. A dead branch? Oh, yeah, to Japan, right? Thanks, Magnus. Yeah, you, at least you have that piece of paper, right? At least it's not like a, a stopping point for a person to hire you because that did happen to me one time. I definitely did not get a job once when I applied because I didn't have a degree. Have I ever considered going triple A? I probably will never, ever do that. I love I love being in I love being in control of my entire game. I love being the being able to create all aspects of a video game. I don't want anyone telling me what to do. And working for a AAA company means someone would tell me what to do. And I don't like that at all. It's probably never going to happen. No, for real. Yeah. No, it's very good to have a degree, man. 
it's definitely going to help. There we go. That just makes it more vibrant. So when it's actually just a little screenshot, it makes a lot more, I don't know, connection visually. Oh, less than a thousand people at it, right? Oh wait, should this one be have those edges? Yes, let's have, let's put some edges on this one. So we're gonna copy the sword over to Explorer. Yeah. No, maybe not. I kind of like it better without almost. Huh. Okay. Well, that's settled. Having my own studio, yes. That's something I would definitely do. If, I can't imagine it would ever become a AAA studio because that just seems so far-fetched at this point to me. But, like, having my own small indie studio, that would be sweet. I would love to do that. I would love for Songbringer to be that successful or, or Future Games to be that successful that I could actually pull that off. I mean, it would require a lot more cash than... Well, I haven't made any cash really except for, you know, except for like Kickstarter and stuff like that. But when can I apply? Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Lime, thank you, man. That's a cool. All okay, right. I'm just going to delete that because I don't want it. Gray. Save icon square. <laughs> nice. I know, right? It's probably what would have to happen. So I'd have to go get, go down to San Jose, down to, down to Silicon Valley, and shop it around. Hey, look. I created this game that people liked. You should give me $5 million, and I will create a studio, and just make sure to keep on giving me at least a million dollars a year, and I'll keep making games. You want in? This is the ground floor, man. It's the ground floor. You want to give me a million dollars a year? Sure. Here. Right? Easy. I'll definitely create at least one game a year. And... Um, I'm going to need a marketing team and stuff. We're going to need a foosball table. Um, we're going to need a soda machine. Yeah, and hopefully in four years, we'll make back the money that you gave us already. <laughs> right, we, we are going to do all this. Another achievement done. Okay, um, what's next? Glad Hand, I guess I could just take a screenshot of one of the, yeah, let's do, that's an easy one. Glad Hand, we'll take a, we'll go to Brutus's cave um brutus where's he at brutus he's at seven two zero in this world i don't think this screen is very good for him though this particular world his cave entrance is kind of janky it is broken because there's not enough mountains behind it. Why does it keep taking a second before it loads? Or is it just oh it's just running in the background. Okay. Oh you know what? That's okay. I guess it's okay. Yeah, that's okay. You could take you could use that. I like the hour of night. That's cool to have these shadows and stuff. And I can always flip things over if I want the shadows the other way. That's pretty good. We'll use that. Okay, so this one's gonna be Glad Hand. Do they? Do they? Wait, what's a sweet pizza? 
Tell me what this sweet pizza is. I'm curious. I just found out about a new kind of pizza too. It's where you get a pizza salad. Have you heard of those? It's this place in, I saw in San Jose, but I know they have them in other places too. But you can get a pizza salad type thing. You like make a salad thing on type of a pizza bread or something. You live in New Orleans, dude. Yeah, you <laughs> I wanna come visit you, man. Just to eat the food. No, for real? A chocolate pizza? Okay, wait. What? What? Really? Chocolate pizza? Is a thing? I mean, I, I know that's a thing at like the fairgrounds where you have like chocolate hot dogs and weird stuff like that, but chocolate? This is like a place that sells, sells chocolate pizza? And it's not at, at a fairgrounds? <laughs> okay, wait. Now that is looking really good, actually. I can see it with the right kind of bread and the right kind of chocolate and stuff. This could be delicious. But decadent. Right? <laughs> Look at the one with the M&Ms. Man. Oh, it's making my eyes water looking at all this stuff. I don't know why. My eyes are watering. Henko, what's up, man? Vulcan pizza. What the heck is a Vulcan pizza? Is that a thing, too? Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, E3 Hive, what's up, man? I'm so excited to be there. Sharing the game again. I'll be dressed as a wizard the whole time. Sharing the game Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and at events afterwards. It's going to be busy as shit. I'm going to come home like tired as shit, but it'll be fun. This Vulcan pizza looks delicious. What is, it, what are, what is all this in here? It's a lot of stuff. Fries, Greek salad, hummus, um, sour cream. There's a lot of stuff in here. Oh man, this is making me hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry now. That's a good thing though. I'm, ex I'm I love being hungry. Being hungry means I get to eat food. Why is it so dark? Right? Does this one not seem kind of dark? I think I'm going to lighten this one up, actually. No, not like that. With some levels. You're starving? Yeah, I know, right? I know the feeling, man. I'm starving. There, that's a good way to brighten it. Yeah, about like that. That looks better. At least for these grayscale ones. This one is Gladhand. Gladhand W. You're t we're all hungry now. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, whoops. Once again, saved it with the crop. Oh, that's probably why it looks so dark. I'm really glad I didn't want to add those borders to all these. Silly Billy Bear, what's up? Hey man, it's been a while since you've been on the stream. How you been? Um, Gladhand 
W minus minus. Nope. This one is W minus minus now. Yes. There we go. Yes. Now, do I want the levels with it? No. See, when you turn off the levels or the gray, looks all right. Actually, I don't know. I kind of like it brighter. Oh, you did the press conference? Sweet, dude. A way out is which one's that? I'll be oh, by the way, I will be on this on the Twitch E3 pre pre show. So if you're watching Twitch, um, but right before E3, yours truly will be on it dressed like a wizard. A way out, huh? Oh, yeah, somebody, I think somebody mentioned this the other day. This one's like. <laughs> you went through your first year of uni? uni? Sweet, man. Comp sci? Right on. That's fun. Oh, well, sorry. I'm assuming. How? You said it was, um. It was cool. That's good. I like hearing that. I had a lot of fun with my first year of college, so I guess I try and project that on other people. But I only did one year of college. That was enough for me. There weren't any girls in my school, so I left. I left in search of women. I heard of this place in the Amazon. I was like, the Amazon? Really? It's got, it's got women. I'll go there. Find me a woman. I'll bonk her on the head with the club. That's how you do it, right? Keep on rendering the wrong one here. Did, did I find, yes. Yes, but it was many, many years after that that I finally found the lady that I'm with now and I'm in, that I'm in love with. And then I'm happy with, it took a while. I guess if I give you any advice about finding finding a, a significant other is just to find out what it is that you want in a relationship long term. That's it. That's the first thing you got to do. Find out what you want. So, you know, maybe you need to go through a few relationships first before you figure out what it is that you want in a relationship. Um, or maybe you just find it right out of the bat. I don't know. But once you know what you want, then you can help. Then you then it's easier to find what you're looking for. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks, Ken. <laughs> I know it sounds it sounds really like cliche and and stuff, but it wasn't until I finally figured out what I wanted that I actually find started finding relationships that worked for me, you know. So <laughs> suddenly dating advice. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yeah, I'm here for you guys for whatever you need, you know. What do you need, huh? You need some psychological help with something? Right? That's, that's a good point. Cliches are there for a reason, aren't they? This one, this one turned out too dark. But this one didn't. You writing it down? Nice. Oh, there you go. That's a great school. You have an awesome school. That still looks dark. Oh, well.
Okay, enough with this one. That's good enough. Okay, next one. What should we do? No shop? Oh, there's shop and no shop. These should be pretty easy. Do some screenshots of the shops. Alright, we'll do first we'll do a screenshot where the shop has items, and then we'll do one where there's no items. And that will be it for this one. Shop number what should we do? Let's try the first one here. Salad dog, what's up man? How you doing? We're talking about some funny stuff today. Oh, how did we get that? Oh debug mode. Yeah, we've been talking about dating advice, um, funny games coming up on for E3. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm in I'm in tiny songbringer mode today. Okay, that should be good. I'm working on this achievements, and my theory here, or at least the thing I'm stretching to achieve with all the achievement icons, is creating a meaningful connection for the player so that you when you look at one of these achievement icons you um, you are sort of drawn in you're you create an emotional attachment to the to it Teak what's up yes yeah, song reader five pod classic song bringer for for Game Boy Advance no not even Game Boy Advance just Game Boy Finally creating some individual achievement icons for all the achievements. This has been on my list for a while. This is just so satisfying today. I don't know why today, all of a sudden, this is the most satisfying activity in the world, but it is. It's kind of how things go. It's like one moment you're like, oh, I don't want to do achievement icons. That sounds so, uh. And then today I'm like, that's like the most exciting thing in the world. Let's do that right now. Do I want to smoke some weed? No, let's not even smoke weed. Let's just go straight into making achievement icons right now. That's how I feel today. Yes, finishing up Swarmonium Explorer. Nice, man. Whoa, and you got Steam Workshop supporting your map editor. Sweet. Yeah, right? Some things just have got to come at the end, right? Once you got a good foundation for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's got to be one of the reasons why. Shop. Oops. Shop W minus minus. Shop minus minus. So, um, any other games people are excited about for E3? I ask, I ask this question like almost any day I can before E3 because I like being excited about games coming up. I'm like wondering what are the ones that I that I want to keep my eye on. I find like E3 is one of those times where you get some of the bigger studios almost dominate the conversation. So it's kind of, it's like mostly people are, it seems like most people are, mostly people are excited about AAA games at E3. Is that true? What do you guys find? It's almost like GDC time, like around March, is when people are, are kind of more excited about smaller titles. No, maybe it's more like June and July and August, like later in the summer. That's when people are into the indie games. I don't know. Maybe people are into indie games all the time. And people are into AAA games all the time. It's just that E3 has a lot of AAA games because it's expensive. It's expensive to be at E3. Did I get this right? 
Yeah, I checked that. Okay, now we're gonna do no shop. No shop is gonna be just like that one, except maybe I'll do some like color differences too on this. Okay, we're gonna do. We're gonna have to hack the code for this one. So all the items we want to be invisible. I think you just gotta go create item. Oh, I just go to create items. Create items. And just return. There, that should hack it out so we don't have any items on the screen. Oh, the chat's all weird. New Elder Scrolls? Oh, sorry guys, I think I missed some of your chat messages. My chat's all unchatty. Children of Morta, right, yeah, I, I backed them. I backed Wildfire as well. That's crazy. I backed these two games and I created this one. I'm I'm really excited about Children Wars. I played there the alpha. I'm really it's a it's a great game. Great pixel art. It's a it's a super roguelikey. You know you got to kind of like roguelikes for this one. And Wildfire I haven't played yet, but I but um I'm excited to play that. It looks like it's got some really interesting mechanics. Ooblets, yeah I've heard of that. Nice. Oh Fallout Four VR. Doom VR is that the so is that the the newest Doom that they that just killed it and it was awesome? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it probably is, huh? Yeah, Doom VR. Oh, I hope I get to play Doom VR at E3. That would be sweet. I'll probably have to wait in line. Right? Yeah. Okay, we got enough frames there. Pick one. Pick anyone. Oh, right? You haven't played any of those? Oh, don't be jealous. It's all cool. It's probably better that you'd play the, the higher quality version of Children of Morta anyway. It was kind of rough around the edges because it, it was only an alpha version when I played it. But it definitely had some solid concepts. I really am excited for that team. Oh, another one I'm excited about that I backed was, um, oh, what's the, that? it's like an adventure pixel art top-down game um, by a team in Spain, and, oh, it's called Crossing Souls. Crossing Souls looks like a cool indie game, and I'm really excited for it. Elite Dangerous? Totally, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. VR. It's exciting to see some, some good games coming out there and... Check it out. This is Crossing Souls. Whoa, they have a sweet, like, box art style artwork now. They have a Wikipedia? Cool, man. Oh, they Devolver signed them? Oh, good for them. They got signed by Devolver since since their Kickstarter and stuff. Yeah, man. All right, Lime. It's good seeing you, dude. Good chatting with you, I mean. Sea of Thieves, huh? What's that? It's a Stranger Things game, I know, right? But it came out. It, it was created like way before Stranger Things, but yeah, very much like same kind of thing, right? I know. I I need to create a Wikipedia. I was like, Songbringer doesn't have one of those. Oh, cool. This looks fun. This looks adventure-y. Okay, achievement, no shop.
So this one is just like shop except it doesn't have items on the wall. I'm going to try and change it a little bit more so that it's a little bit more unique. Like maybe I'll try inverting colors or doing some weird color to it. Yeah, crossing souls. Yeah. Oh, like at least not making it vibrant. That's one way to do it. But what if I shifted all the hues of the colors? I mean, of course I could make it more grayscale, but that would just be like it's it's unachieved version. What if it was totally shifted? Yeah, this is doing it. Not Not like that, but maybe like everything but the flames. Yeah, solarized polar coordinates. Okay, I want to do like select the fires. I want to keep these fires the same. And, and difference clouds and lens flare, just for good measure. Uh, then I'm going to blur this. Ooh, not that much. Not that much even. More like that. There, now we can change this hue without changing the color of the flames too much. I kind of liked it more like yellowish right there. It's, And then maybe more... What's the right color for if you didn't... I guess, I guess yellowish. Yeah, right about there, maybe. You're going to Hollywood with this lens flare. I think that creates enough of a difference. Of course, the gray version doesn't look... Oh, you know what? I can easily just flip it. That'll help, too. Flip horizontal. There. Already looks a lot different, doesn't it? You like the reddish tone? I liked the, I liked the reddish tone as well, but I felt that that conveyed um, battle or anger or you know um, you know some sort of like fighting type of energy. And I think this yellowish kind of creates the feeling that you weren't there. It's an old thing or something. If you compare pixel art to stylized 3D modeling, which would you say is more work? Oh, pff, definitely 3D modeling is more work, in my opinion. You lose hope? Why? You know what? You know what you should do, just a cookie? Here. Let's take a trip down memory lane, huh? Bioware's Anthem, cool. It didn't show much, huh? Check this out, just a cookie. Let's take a trip down memory lane and look at some of the oldest, crappiest art for Songbringer you're ever gonna see. Let me show you, before I even had a very good mock-up image, I'll show you what my characters look like. What are the oldest? Let's just look at the date modified even. We're going backwards, date modified. Yeah, here we go. Look at this. Was this it? No, that wasn't. Yeah, this is pretty old right here. Look at this. This is before the characters were even the characters that they are now. Right? That's what that's what I thought Songbringer might look like at one point. 
This is what I thought rock would look like. Just this black thing. And this is what I thought Vel would look like. Yeah, that too. It's called um, from from programmer to artist. Whoa, actual reveal, cool. But look at it. Look at this though. Okay, you might say it looks good, but just t let's take off some stuff, right? Let's just break it down to there. See, even when I just take away the light, lighting is so much. So it makes so much of a huge difference on everything, just lighting. And look at this texturing. If I take away the texturing, that texture was just like a cheesy texture I got. You know what I mean? The more time you spend with your art, it'll get better and better. Trust me. To me, this looks bad. But look how much of a difference light makes. Just light, some good light. And all you need to do with lighting is like master levels, master creating light beams and stuff. These light beams look like crap to me, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Lighting will change everything. Battlefront 2, cautiously excited, yeah. Whoa, cool tweet. Tweet. Nice, man. I love it. I like how it's got the concept of the the particles and stuff there. Right? Yeah, so just a cookie, a lot of songbringers like if you if you turned off all the shaders for songbringer, it wouldn't look as good. And all the shaders do is just add lighting. That's all it is, is just add stuff like this to, to Songbringer dynamically. And so, and it took a long time to develop that. You know, it was, if you look back at the old streams of Songbringer, you'll see like it, it didn't look that good at all. And then six months in, I started doing more effects on like, on the levels and everything that just changed it, changed the game dramatically as far as the art goes. Right? Yeah. Whatever, yeah, whatever process you want to use, you'll you'll eventually find what works well for you. And all I'm saying is the more time you spend with your art, the better it'll get. And so you may be at a point where you're like, man, my art doesn't look that good right now. I don't feel like it looks that good. But give it time. Trust me, if you keep going, you, just, you will you will get better and better and better and better and better. And eventually you'll be like, whoa, this looks good now. And it won't just be you saying it looks good, it'll be other people saying it looks good too. So you can do it, man. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. Okay, so we got the gray version of this. Actions. Save this icon. Wow, look at this, I made some real progress so far today. No shop. That's W minus minus. Working on achievement icons. Yes, man. I'm. I, this is one of my favorite things to do is to encourage people because it's been a very a very long road for me with Songbringer, and I and like I started out with a lot of the same feelings that you might have too right now or or. You know what I mean? We might have similar feelings in the sense that you're like, what? My art's not that great. But give it time, man. Give it some time and energy. So, okay, that's W. There's the square version. No shop, no shop. This is kind of a weird icon. This is some weird colors, but I think it works. Okay, how many are done so far? How many are left to do? Like, there's wizard, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
there's still 11, 12, 13. There's 13 of these left to do. But that means that I've gotten 19 of them done in this stream. It's pretty good. There's 32 total. So yeah, I got crap. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm shutting down the stream here at this point. I'm kinda like winding it all down, but yeah, so I got a lot of these ones for the dungeons done. Um and then some other miscellaneous ones. But this will be cool. This will be finally cool to like have some actual achievement icons individually for these achievements. And the way I started the stream was just to say, say that my challenge is to create these icons and create an emotional attachment for you as a player. By just by looking at one of these screens, just going, whoa, I, I kind of remember, I remember that place. Or that, you know, this place is meaningful to me because I was there. And, and it like, if you look at like an achievement icon on when you're on Steam, I want it to draw the player in. You know, like, oh, I haven't done that achievement. And I want even the, just the icon right there to kind of create an emotional attachment, you know? Sweet. When do I usually stream? Like, um, well, it's always about this time. So maybe somewhere between 2 and 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And it's really random is when I stream. I used to stream like five days a week solid sometimes more and lately it's been the end of the video game so I've been busy as shit and I've only been streaming like two or three times a week max sometimes not even once a week so it's been really kind of hit or miss as far as when I exactly stream so but uh, if you follow if you follow me here on Twitch that's probably the best way to do it Star Command? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, these are the games I I have that I I've hidden a lot of games that I didn't like. Not no, I mean not just didn't like, but like you know what I mean. Children Morta Crawl Yeah, here. Th uh, let me let me show you what I mean too. Like, did I keep the win? No, never mind. I didn't keep the window open. But at the beginning of the stream, I well, like, you know what? Shoot, let's just go there anyways. I'll kind of show you what I was trying to do with the, the achievement icons. Was like, uh, wizard foo games achievements. Here we go. Here we go. This is a pretty good example. Um, this is a, you know this is a great game. Rain World's awesome, but for me as a player, when I look at these icons, I, I don't I'm not feeling any sort of attachment or meaning for any of these. None of these make me want to stretch to achieve this. You know, it's it's I'm not saying it's bad art. It looks like good art to me. It's just that it doesn't actually mean anything to me as a player. But then you look at something like Axiom Verge. Look at Axiom Verge's icons. Steam achievement icons. These are pretty rad. You know what I mean? I remember fighting this guy. I remember fighting that guy. These look like rad art. This draws me in. This means something to me. So yeah. There you go. Well, so that's going to be it for today's stream. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Thanks for getting me hungry. I'm excited to go eat some lunch now. Uh, but yeah, um, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you all next time I stream. So cheers, everybody.